Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Monday, May 23rd, 2022. Uh, just as I was getting ready to post the NASDAQ update, I looked over and the markets were reopening here in Globex. And the NASDAQ suddenly gapped down 160, ended up down 195. Now it's you know, just kind of working its way back and forth here, uh, now down 185. The S&P gap down, I think it was 38 or 40, pushes it back up. We'll see what they want to do. I've kind of looked around to see what type of news would have come out to force that large of a gap. Uh, again, I'm not really sure if it had anything to do with the restructuring uh, of the Dow, um, which was you know out there today that uh, Salesforce is moving in, ExxonMobil moving out. So I'm not really sure or if there was something else that happened within, but it's hitting the NASDAQ the hardest. ExxonMobil is not a part of the NASDAQ and neither is Salesforce. So again, not really sure what is behind them. Absolutely just kind of walking in and going enough, boom, sold. But let's drop down. Let's go over this because it does put a different spin on what we're looking at and what the possibilities are. So let's start right in. And right now, again, on the daily chart, I don't have any changes to make. What could be at uh, in question is the fact if indeed the minor third wave did conclude at Friday's lows at 3807. So if, if it did, as and I've not changed it yet because I still I don't have any reason to, and I would need confirmation from the market that actually what could be happening, I'm going to go over right now, uh, is <clears throat> still in force. So let's drop down to the hourly. If indeed that was the minor third down here, then what we're looking at is a minor fourth wave. Come on. It, come on. Oy, 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 oy. Right. Let me start over. And it won't do it. All right, let's try it this way. It just gets real picky. Working on a mouse pad. Maybe I need a new mouse pad. I don't know. But that seems to work. Okay, so down here, we we have been working, and if this is the low, we're working in a, on an ABC. That ABC only got up to the hourly 200 after the market closed today. They pushed it up, and it traded a little bit above it, came back down below it, but that's where it closed right there, basically. Closed at 78, the 200 sitting at 39.80. So my mind, I'm thinking, okay, we got an A, we got a B, nice. Now we're into a C wave, and then it does this gap. Now, whether or not we can, this is totally salvageable, so if that's what needs to happen. But let me tell you how and what possible, what's possible now. We could do, an, this could be an ABC up and only be a wave A of that minor fourth wave. And this is a B wave. Gaps, sure, strange things happen in a B wave. It, it's deceptive, it's over, overdone type stuff. So these types of moves with inside a corrective wave and then inside of a B wave, not untypical, but we need more market. We need more to stand on to, to say which direction, what's more likely, where the probabilities lie. So I gotta toss them all in here together. Now, if it's a B wave coming off, what we're going to look to do is we're going to have to put on a retracement levels. Hold it there, thank you. And so on a retracement, you can see we're almost down to the 3A2 level, which is 39.16. B wave, sure, it can do that. But because of the gap, I'd be looking for it to come down into here. So it can come all the way down to 38.60 and still be a B wave turn around and go. It can come all the way down and retest the low. It just can't, it actually could, it actually could likely, yeah, it could break it. I would not be expecting it here, but it could. Um, in any case, I think that what we may, we need to now look out for is that what if this is the ABC and this is the minor four? Now I, I'd have to, consider it at least the minor four because you see the market did come up over the weekend above 
3950. And that was the level that I had spoke of. It's like, if it gets above there, then this is not, then this is a complete little five down. And likely that would be the minute five and of the minor three. So that still stays in place. How this plays out in terms of is this all of the minor four? If it is, whoa, way, way under and something serious is afoot. And what I mean by that is like, if that's all it can do and it can't get up here, and we were thinking that it should get above 41, had a chance of getting up to 42, and it couldn't get past 39.80, basically. It, shouldn't, it couldn't even get above 4,000. That would be, for the S&P and for the market, kind of devastating. It's, good. It's, it's a very negative tone. If it can't do that, that just is telling us that the sellers are there, they're ready, they're smacking, they're done. And it's like, wow. First of all, I was expecting as a minor fourth wave that it would take longer to get up here, but we're not going. At least right not, not right now. So again, this can turn again. This can turn and move higher if it chooses. If the market decides this was all a folly or for whatever reason it's going down, kind of moves to the side, I don't know. I've not been able to find anything on it that would suggest why it's doing what it's doing. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, unless somebody else, I know there were some reports today, but God, to have it that negative, whew. Like somebody declared bankruptcy. In any case, here we go. Right now, we're on the hourly, and we kind of broke below that hourly 50, but we've retaken it and so now sitting right at it. So we look at these things and go, like, well, if it kind of breaks and it's headed for 39.16, right? We kind of run out of moving averages. They were all tucked up right into here. There's the 200, there's the four, the eight, the 20, and the 50. If it breaks below the 50, whoops. What we will then look for is for the twenty at the fourth, the eight, and the twenty to start moving lower. For the twenty to get below the fifty, for the eight to get to below the fifty, and for the four to get below the fifty, and then in sequence for the eight and the four to get below the twenty. Then we're in alignment to go down. Well, if that occurs on the hourly chart, instead of being in alignment to go up, we're in alignment to go down, and that would change a lot of things. That could put the minor four here, and we're in that minor fifth wave. And again, I will also say that what it would do if this is the case, it would decouple the NASDAQ and the S&P from these detailed counts that we're getting down inside. I think they both would carry the same picture in terms of we're looking for moves down, but they're going to come in different in a little bit different form. Um, but that's yet to be drawn and yet to be seen. So we shall wait and reserve judgment on all of that. So, but if it doesn't hold, now I'm going to take all of these off. And we're going to put back on the extensions, which gave us Downside targets, actually, yeah, I'm going to take it from that low. I could go a little higher, but that's all right. So initially, this is what we continue to look for, for the intermediate third wave. So if this is minor three, we get a minor four in here, as short and as unfulfilled as it is, that might, that, it, let me just state, if it really turned out to be that way, what the market is telling you loudly and clearly is that there's a tremendous weakness. There is weakness in here. I discussed and I've often said there many things stand out there ready to, to kick the, the proverbial stick into the spokes of the market. And that if you could see what happened to it coughs, it sputters, and then boom. It just walks in. It's like, we're done. So, boom. And um, now, we're, now we're living it. Now we're seeing it. So if that is the case, this should not be a problem. 
And if it does, and we come down in a minor five, it's going to be easier to put the intermediate third down here. But then guess what? We still only have an intermediate fourth wave. So that could go up. If it comes in shallow yet again, we're not in a good position. When things keep coming up and the sellers keep coming in with additional power, additional acceleration, the buyers will have to step aside because you're going to be buying into something that's going to be, you're not even going to get a handshake and a thank you. It's just get out of the way. And it, it, it just can turn and it can get very nasty. Don't forget. They all wanted you to believe that our market was way, way, way oversold. And it might still be. Let's take a look at that weekly chart. Sure as hell. Look at that. Still extremely oversold. But we just gapped lower. Now, that doesn't mean we continue to drop. But you kind of have to take a step back and go, hmm, okay. Let's see what it develops into. Again, you got to go all the way back down to that hourly chart. And you got to take a look and go, like, what is this going to develop into? All right. This now has another 29 minutes, this bar. And then are we going to get another bar of down or another bar of like inside and another bar maybe to see if it's going to be like a one, a two, or how, you know, we see how it develops. So how I got to leave this right now, it is sitting at the 50. If it breaks below the 50, I really would look for some, some type of acceleration, but it's likely just going to drop down to here. 3,900, and that'll be its next little perch, right? Round number, let's just see what, who comes in. Let's just see what happens. And what, for whatever reason, the market may find support there, particularly like we have a low at 3,906. We have lows at 3,913. So we got, we got a lot of like, quote unquote, price support here. A break there though, drops us pretty quickly in, in terms of support. We do have some, 38.50, we do have some 38.43, then we have more 38.15, 38.07, now we're below 38.00. And our next stop, we start to drop into the black holes again, folks, you're gonna have to go too far to the left to find price support um, because we've not been down here for quite some time. And then you can see 37, 39, 36, 34, 34, 66. So we're not, this is not an impossibility. We're three steps away from reaching that zone. The zone, oh my God, you can't go there. Well, it can. But I'm going to just lay this out again. There's no reason to sit with a losing position because for whatever reason, you don't think it should go down. Stop letting your position talk. Realize maybe you need to make a change. Play it. Why give up all that money when you could just trade it and make money? So again, don't be bullish. Don't be bearish. Just trade what's in front of you. And right now, they're selling. So as a, as a trader, as a trader in the futures, Right now, because the market's telling me so, we're in a little bit of a bounce. I look at my, my shorter term, shorter time frames, and we're, oops, I don't want that. Come on. We are in a little bit of a bounce. As you can see, all of them, they're all going to do the same thing. We're in a little bit of a bounce. And that bounce, is three waves, three waves, three waves, three waves. So if this gets up to 39.44, hallelujah, it's just completed an ABC up. What's next? If this is one, two, and this is three, and that's a four, it's got one more slide, and it's already done five down off of today's high on the five minute chart. Never complete movement. So this is what we're looking at. This is what we're going to confront. Okay. I don't want, I could talk all night because there's so much to talk about in terms of how do you want to trade it and how to trade it. But I leave that to the trade room. You want information on the trade room? Drop me a message, put it in the comment box. I will respond. I will let you know. Um, but there's plenty to trade. There's plenty of money. Not every trade is going to work either. So, 
So the deal is it's like you got to learn how to manage the risk, manage your risk, trade, have stops, have a plan, et cetera, et cetera. All right, our next update, Tuesday, May 24th.